Okay. Okay, Ruby up. Now we're going to groom her. And what I do when I start grooming, you do a good girl, is I take the um, real soft curry comb and I just go around in quick circles, not too hard. Ruby's gained a little weight. <laughs> And this um, massages your skin, gets out all the natural oils. And if you want a dog with nice, healthy skin and nice, soft fur, nice, shiny, soft fur, never bathe them. I know it sounds weird, but it works. Believe me. If you don't bathe your dogs, they're much healthier for it. Obviously, there's times where they're rolled in something absolutely disgusting that you have to bathe them or... They play with one of those striped cats, but um, other than that, don't bathe them if you don't have to because in everyday grooming, you do this only once a week, but um, run a um, soft brush over them with a little bit of grooming spray once a day, and you're going to have a dog that has a very healthy um, skin and very healthy hair coat. There. Do their legs. Yeah, good girl. And then after that's done, I usually, um, you can use the Furminator. Um, like I said, these are very expensive. Um, I think this is $36. Um, but also a uh, horse shedding blade, a shedding wiping blade works, works well too. So you can use that as well. But you can see the dead hair pulls out. hair out and where they have wrinkles just pull the skin away so you can get that oh. there. are we on time two minutes okay And like I said, with this, especially with a real short, tight-coated dog like this, you want to do it very gently because mm -hmm. otherwise those metal blades are going to scratch their skin. I wish I could show anal plans, how to do anal plans, but it's kind of something that you really can't describe. But people having to wait to go to their vets to get it done when they could do it at home would be a big help. And then I use that grooming spray, shake it really well. And I start, because it's all saturated in the brush, I just go all the way down the middle of her, from her head to her tail, and then I work around the face first, getting in all the nooks and crannies and being careful of her eyes. Head. It's good to teach them a word like head. But they know you want to work with their head, put a collar on her, do their ears, or anything that you want their head to hold still. And to wait. Very good. Good girl. And tell them how good they are and how beautiful. Yes, you're so beautiful. Oh, yes, you are. Look how beautiful, huh? Yes, Ruby's beautiful. Yes. Beautiful girl. And this you can use hard because it's really soft and it actually feels good. Yes, it does. It feels good, huh? Yes. And you want to get their tail too. All the way around. And by the way, in the ring, when judges feel a um, bow master's tails, which they always do, they're looking for a crook at the end. Of a little, um, crook because that's a fault from the bulldog. Not that that has anything to do with grooming, but I'm going to brush their legs really well. There. There, you're so beautiful. Yes, you are. If you're going to tape their ears after you groom them, make sure you don't put the grooming spray or brush their ears because it'll be really hard to get the tape to stick because it's got oils in it.
And by doing a good job grooming, you can also kind of check out their whole body for any hair loss or any bumps or lumps or anything out of the ordinary. Her hair is standing up. She's chilly. When they get chilly, their hair stands up a little bit. Kind of fluff up like ferns. Okay. I'll start showing how pretty you are. Say, call her name. Ruby. Ruby. Hi. Say hi. Yeah. And then give a cookie or uh, whatever. This chick, case chicken. See how pretty. Up. No, not up for a second. Up. Stand. Stand up. Stand. Yes. We. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Okay.